Psychology and Training Center, and this is my lovely wife, Crystal. Hello. And we are trying something different today, so on the computer, as we, it seems like we are like every other week. Uh, so bear with us yeah, if there's technical glitches. Dialing stuff in. But, but like he said, we're yeah. with the Dog Psychology and Training Center, um, and this topic is... We're going to talk about socialization for adult dogs. Normally we talk about that with pups. Uh, mm -hmm. So can uh, an adult dog be socialized? And we are going to be talking about my dog acts like Cujo at the vet. What do I do? So what are we talking about? Yeah. Before we get started, though, I do want to Take mention what I was doing yesterday. So um, Barkery Bistro on Augusta was hosting a Paint Your Pet Night. Paint Your Pet Night. And it was super awesome. It was by Open Art Studios. So Ashley, 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 I was combining her first and last name. Ashley Brickner um, sketches your dog's portrait. So you send them a picture. And then um, a Jessica Brush helps you or coaches you through painting your dog. So I was a little intimidated because I'm not much of an artist. Um, but they make it super easy and fun. So here's my before picture. Check. My lovely Morgan. And then here's what they helped me accomplish. This was all me with their guidance. So, like, I would have loved to just hand them this picture and say, paint this of my dog. Um, but they um, were super awesome and patient with us, um, especially me because I awesome. have a lot of uh, questions and I suffer from perfection paralysis. Um, and so, yeah, they helped me go from this to this. I'm excited. I feel like an artist. I feel like I could open up my studio. Ashley, I might need some space. Uh, just kidding. I'm not an artist. Um, it would take me. It would turn me really into a mean person. That. But I, really I wanted to give a shout out because I thought that was really good. And everybody's pictures there um, last night were amazing. So um, if you ever want to do a paint your pet night, check out Open Art Studios and see where they are going to be. They also do private parties. So if you and some of your dog friends want to get together, um, they can also do like a private party. So um, for yeah. for painting or for other things. Uh, painting and sketching. So, cool. um, what other things did you think? Oh, you just said private party, so all kinds of things jump into my head. But I was just making sure we were talking exclusively about art. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. <laughs> uh, I'm tracking. I'm tracking. So cool. Awesome. Uh, socialization. Socialization. So I'll read the questions yeah. we got today, uh, or throughout the week, I should say, not this. Today. Four today. So one was, um, I'm not going to answer them right away, so I'm going to read the questions first, and then I'm going to go back and answer. Uh, my boxer is seven, never been properly socialized with other dogs. <laughs> However, he gets along fine with certain dogs he knows, like his fur brother, but acts like Cujo at the vet. It's embarrassing. Can he still be properly socialized at his age? Um, and we'll get to that one. And then the next question, pull it up here. Um, is there a way to socialize an adult dog? He gets along great with our little dog, but hates other dogs. So um, it's it's kind of uh, I always enjoy the theme that these questions present. Like every week, yeah, like yeah. they kind of be they kind of be a similar they kind of be they, they kind, they kind of, be, of be a similar topic, they kind of be um, which is really great. It makes it easier on. for us. So thank you for coming together, guys, um, and making it easier for us. So socialization that is our topic. So. Um, as far as, let's start with the first question. Well, they both are the same question. So yeah. um, the seven-year-old boxer gets along with his fur brother, but not other dogs. Can he be socialized? Um, yes and no. Think of your dog as a personality. What kind of personality is your dog? Is he an introvert? Is he an extrovert? Is he, is he a dog dog? Is he a people dog? Some dogs are just um, the dog dogs. Like they'd rather go play with other dogs and with people they kind of shy away um, from. They don't like as much human contact as they do dog contact. But that doesn't mean that that dog doesn't love contact from its family members. Um, I feel like a sneeze is coming on, so I'm... Let it out. Just not on the keyboard, please. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, so socializing with strangers is awkward, but family is fine. And then you have dogs that love people. Any person can come into its life, and they're like, yes, you're my new best friend. Let's go out. Um, versus strange dogs, so like, oh, I don't know. You look weird to me. I'm not too good with your kind, um, even though they're dogs. Um, but they just, they're not dog dogs, and that's okay. Um, we have a miniature schnauzer who's 14, but his whole life he's never been dog aggressive. 
But if you could give him the choice to be sit on the couch and be pet by somebody or go play with another dog, he'd always choose the care couch less and about being pet. Playing with another dog. Um, and then we've had dogs where you know we've had people come in and say, "You can go sit on the couch with them, or you can go play with their dog," and they're like, "Oh, dog all the way. I don't care about these people." So mm -hmm. know your dog and what they would truly like. I think sometimes we project what we want or what we think is normal onto our dogs, and that's not normal or who they are. So know that first. Um, you know, I always tell people, we can get your dog to tolerate other dogs' presence, but we can't teach them to like or love other dogs. Um, that's the same for people. We come into contact with tons of people throughout our life. We surely aren't going to love and like all of them, but we do have to tolerate them. It's not acceptable um, to, you know, for kids, we're, we're learning with our, our kids, that if you don't like somebody, it's not acceptable to say, I'm not going to talk to you because I don't like you, or to push them or bully them. Um, that's not acceptable, but there is a polite way to say, hi, yeah, I'm doing good, you know, thanks for asking, and then you can move on with your day um, to be respectful back. So we can kind of do the same with dogs. I can't teach them to love other dogs and engage with other dogs, but I can teach them to accept their presence socially, so that doesn't mean playing, it means acknowledging them, acknowledging them on the street and being like, yeah, I see you, but I'm not going to make a big deal about it and moving on. Um, and so that's something we can definitely do. So when you have an older dog that gets along with it, your dogs at home clearly they love their family that's great uh, but that doesn't mean they're a social butterfly and they want to love other dogs a lot of families contact us and say um i want my dog to go play at the dog park but he's afraid of other dogs or doesn't like other dogs well you know, that's not very nice it's kind of like telling somebody who's an introvert i want you to do public speeches <laughs> oh um I made myself do it because I was an introvert, but I was terrified. Okay, and so the like, same is true for your like dogs. Your kids don't like to, to play instruments, and, you, and you, you're going to play the saxophone, right? Or like, they're not sports oriented, and you force them into sports. It's not true uh, to who they are. Even if they do it, they're going to be miserable. Right. I mean, so why force it? Exactly. Know? So don't put your dog in that situation. Learn your dog. Who is your dog? Would he really like going to a dog park? Probably not. If he, he's afraid of other dogs or doesn't like other dogs, like he'd rather be at home, and that's okay. Your dog does not need a dog park. In fact, we don't like dog parks because there's always that bully dog that goes there who's mom, you know, dog mom or dog dad isn't paying attention and he's a bully and he starts fights. And then we have to fix that dog's um, that was attacked to show them that not all dogs are bad. You don't have to be afraid or aggressive to all dogs. There's just that one jerk dog um, at the dog park. So yeah. um, we don't like dog, par dog parks for that reason. There's an inch one. Uh, no, I'm thinking about and so um, that's, yeah, not a plug for dog parks. Don't like them, don't go. We actually did a video about that too. We did. Um, and so our thing is if your dog likes other dogs and he is social and he does like playing with other dogs, have controlled play groups with friends and family who you know is responsible for their dog, who you know their dog is a respectful dog and not an awkward, you know, a socially awkward, fearful, or aggressive dog because that's not going to go well. Um, and then have play dates with them so you know what's going on and what to expect versus at a dog park. You never know who's going to show up and whose dogs had training or not training or whose dog's a jerk and gets away with it because the owners just don't know how to stop them. So, uh, yeah, no dog parks. And dogs don't need that. They were bred to be social animals to humans. That's why we domesticated dogs. So we are their family. They don't need a pack of other dogs. They will certainly play with other dogs in the house if you have them, but they don't need that. They need you. They need your animal. And I would say, uh, kind of like if you think about it with your kids too, you always prefer if you know the other kids are hanging around because you know they're less likely to come home with crazy bad habits that or you thoughts or words. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So just yeah. like, yeah, that's a great. Who, who point. are you letting them be around? Right, exactly. Their social influences. You don't know who's at the dog park. Yeah. Can um, you grab that cord? Nope. Oh, yeah, we forgot to plug in. This way we don't go uh, croaking on you guys here in five minutes. Um, so that's to say your dog may not want to be a social butterfly. But even for us introverts, even for those dogs who are not dog dogs, it is not socially acceptable to be aggressive, reactive, bark, pull, lunge, or attack other dogs. So there is absolutely a way to teach them how to be respectful and tolerant of dogs in those situations. So, oh, your phone's overheating there. Uh, no, is this still in the sun? Okay. Uh, we're trying to be outside today, but the sun is, it's 
killing our electronics, literally. So anyways, um, so teaching dogs to be respectful and responsive of other dogs. So what does that mean? Is it socially acceptable for your child or you as an adult to go up and tackle somebody upon first greeting? A stranger. A stranger, I'm sorry. A stranger, you know. I'm not um, sure football practice, which is unlikely in this. Right, but then that scenario. would be expected. Um, so I don't know why so many, I don't know why it's socially acceptable for dogs to go up and pounce on other dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've never met before. Right. So that other dog is like, uh, very rarely would that dog be like, oh, yeah, let's play. They're going to be fearful, uh, frightened, unsure, startled, unsure, not- like, is this a playful pounce? Are you trying to kill me? Like, if I was walking down the street and somebody tackled me, I would be in, I would be in fear of my life. Like, I would feel like they did not have my best interests at hand at that moment. They just tackled me. So dogs have those same fleeting thoughts that go through their head. It is not socially acceptable for dogs to just go up and be like, bah, play base, bah, bah, bah. Um, But it is socially acceptable for them to go up, stop, They can smell each other from a distance, and this is only like a foot, but I'm saying like they can smell each other from three or four feet apart when you stop to greet another person or dog um, to maybe go not nose to nose. This is a nose. Here's my dog noses. Um, This is not good. This is confrontational. It's like if I was talking to Eric like this, he'd instinctively pull back because that's awkward, right? We all have our bubble space. Dogs do too. Um, so to greet like this is too confrontational. So that bubble space is invaded. Now this person's like, you're in my bubble. No, you're in my bubble. Blah, blah, blah. And the dog fight can erupt. Um, or I actually get like puppets, hand puppets, because I always use analogies with my hands. We, uh, we could have changed that. Christmas <laughs> um, And then the other, what is socially acceptable though, is to stop from a distance. They can be smelling. They can be smelling from a distance. And then to not approach face to face, but maybe as you walk by each other, they go to sniff each other's rumps getting dirty now Um, dogs are dirty okay they're dirty creatures and smelling each other's behinds is a socially acceptable way to say hey how are you who are you where you been and what are you doing um they're 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 behind tells them all that so um that is socially acceptable however just like with kids um you know if if a, a kid just met somebody and had a play date and then upon leaving that play date so this is the first time they've played with this kid they go to give a hug and one kid doesn't let go, it gets a little awkward, maybe a little panicky. Yeah, um, so the yeah. same with behind sniffing, right? If they're going to sniff each other's behind, a few seconds is fine. That's, that gives them all the information they need. Like They can smell that quick and that good. If they're staying there longer or even getting pushy with that sniffing or maybe even lifting up their behind, um, some dogs do that, that's, that's, that's bullying. That's being a little rude. That's bratty behavior. So it's your job to show them, yeah. like, hey, no, no, you sniff. That's good. We're going on. Um, and to – to great to get them to keep you know moseying on their way so um really important to make sure your dog's not lingering with that that handshake or hug because it can be awkward um and then so how do we get your dog to that point if they are um reactive or aggressive on the walk Um, we'll start small we always say you know build a distraction ladder what's going to be the easiest for your dog to do maybe hold a sit as a dog walks past your house if that's too hard that's okay start even easier so have them hold a sit with your curtains closed and nobody else in the house but you and the dog okay you mastered that now go up to maybe having a sit as you drop toys and then treats um and so your dog we when we teach sit i guess this is a good precedence um when we teach sit the stay is implied we say sit and they can't move until we give them permission to break so um if i say sit they have to keep sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting until i say break um also important to know we don't ask dogs to sit for more than a couple minutes at a time because it can get uncomfortable so we have them sit for a period that period could be us walking a circle um it could be us dropping treats so they can't get up because they're in a sit command um and as we continue our training and increasing those distractions and mastering them before we move on to the next um you know do several reps of having your dog sit drop that treat pick it up tell your dog break and they get to get up and walk around and have them sit drop that treat have your dog break and they get to go eat that treat um, you know, and, and keep it different and then build up to toys and then maybe um, um, having somebody that lives in the home coming into the home or coming into that room and being a distraction for you up to the point you can get your dog sitting at the window as another dog crosses. Um, so that's, that's, that's goal achieved. Now move on to the next step. What's harder than that? Maybe having your dog sit on the front porch and then the front yard and then maybe on the walk, stepping off of the sidewalk 
onto the grass, it could be four, five, ten feet off of the grass and having your dog hold that sit as another dog passes. Um, and increasing that, you know, getting closer and closer to that passing dog where you can be stepping just off the sidewalk and sitting right beside the sidewalk as that dog passes. So um, there's a lot of different ways to do that. And depending on your dog's reactivity and aggression, it might, it, it's not, it might, it will be safer for you to consult a professional because we can make sure that your dog stays safe and other dogs stay, stay safe because we never want to put a dog in a situation where they could act out on their naughty thoughts and attack or bite or instigate a quarrel um, with yeah, another yeah. dog. So I'm going to just tilt this down a little bit. There we go. Um, so that's really important too to consider um, if your dog just has some you know minor barking and stuff but not um, naughty thoughts of intent to really hurt or harm another dog. Um, you could probably practice this scenario on your own. But if your dog has attacked or you feel like your dog might attack another dog, definitely don't try this by yourself. Yeah, don't risk it. Um, it's not worth it, and we don't want your dog to be put in that situation where they fail, and that that failing could have serious repercussions, repercussions, uh, consequences. We'll go with consequences. Uh, repercussions? I've never had a hard time saying that word. Until I say it. Uh, I do that. Repercussions. Do. Repercussions. You said repper. That totally. Repercussions. Uh, Repercussions. I'm so, sure some people say that. So super Repercus. important though to make sure that you're safe, your dog's safe, and everybody else in the environment is safe. And that's that's where a professional can help. Um, so working up those distraction ladders. The other half to that question was my battery. Do you want to go make sure it's plugged in inside? Yeah. Let me go check on that. Okay. Um, our are... max dying. We got four percent, guys. We're gonna wrap it up. <laughs> Uh, so the next question was how to get your dog to behave at a veterinarian um, when they act like Cujo. Um, well, that's a very common thing. We're charging. We're charging now. We're good. We're good. Um, and that's a very common scenario um, that we hear a lot. And it kind of goes back to, like, if you or you know someone who has, like, a doctor phobia, being in a doctor's office, a hospital, or a dentist, um, you're not going to act like your normal self. You're going to be on edge. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to be stressed, possibly the day before. Um, or um, you, you just have these, these, these uh, precursor signals that tell you. Um, I think it was a Chase or Bank of America commercial or something. Um, that was this lady talking to her dog saying, you want a treat? You want a treat? You want a treat? Um, and she said it in such a way that the dog's message was, I'm taking you to the vet. And the dog was like, I'm out of here. Um, so sometimes <laughs> we do things that we may not even know our dogs are reading, but it's yeah. telling them that we're going to the vet. There's that special something you always Signals. do or get before you go to the vet and your dog knows what's coming. So just, that anxiety. Yeah, yeah. Just like your dogs pick up when you, when you jingle the keys, we're going outside. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they, they associate those different mm -hmm. things. So they, no. Yeah. And they're so smart. So there's a, those assumptions that they can generalize and know, oh, we're going to the vet tomorrow or we're going to the vet today in a few, in a, you know, in a few minutes or whatever that can start leading up to that anxiety. So um, that's to say when you have a dog that's in that state of mind, it's going to be really hard to communicate. Just like if you have a phobia of a doctor's office, a dentist's office, a spider or a snake, and I'm holding a spider in your face saying, it's okay, I won't bite, pet it. You're going to be like, asking what you it's want not going to work. Asking what you want to order for dinner. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's not going to work because you're mentally in a different spot. You're in a different state of mind. So um, it's important to address that state of mind outside of that environment because you can't communicate with somebody who's that – Unless they're gone. <laughs> you're not a goner. In, in they're a, still in help. a sense out of their mind. Yes. Like they're, they're <laughs> not they're not in this moment. Letter. Sure, it's got lemon in it. So Thank just you a heads, for up. The heads up. I'm gonna freak uh, out. <laughs> it's not Oh, it's very good. Um I, got I didn't measure it though. Well I'll never know. Next we'll time. never get it the same. Uh, but that's, it's super important to start that out of the vet's office. So again, we, we talked about building up your dog's socialization and reactivity by starting in a controlled environment where nothing sets them off. Um, start in your controlled environment, um, practicing a sit command with none of those, uh, you know, signals that you usually do to leave the house or possibly go to the vet. Um, and then maybe start adding those signals. So it could be grabbing that special form you always take mm. um, to the vet or that pad of paper that you always write your, your vet notes on. Or, or your stool sample. Or you your know, stool sample. Fun little um, so start vet. collecting stool samples. <laughs> That's a fun one. 
uh, before when you don't have to go to the vet. Like, just do it for not for fun because nobody enjoys that, but do it for kicks practice. And <laughs> kicks and giggles. Post videos uh, on the comments. Because if you do that, like, let's say, <laughs> let's say collecting that stool sample, like, for our dogs, that's a sure bet they're going to the vet. They know it. Um, our dogs don't have any anxiety at the vet, but I could totally see that setting off a dog. So it's a great one to do. Um, if you go outside after your dog with that bag and you pick up their stool, and that's normally what you do before you go to the vet, they might start having some anxiety. But guess what? You're not going to the vet. You're just going to throw that right in the trash without them knowing because you don't want them to see. Um, but you're going to start doing those signals that would normally tell them you're going to the vet, but you're not. And so they start to become normal, and that anxiety starts to decrease. So when you are going to the vet and you collect that stool sample, guess what? They're not in an anxious state of mind because you've done that so often. It's like, Psh, whatever. Um, and then the next step would be maybe getting in the car and going to the vet's office. And you may not even need to get there. You might go halfway and your dog starts getting anxious because they know we're halfway there. I know what, I know where this road takes us. Just pull over. Have a practice session in a safe parking lot, um, not on the street, um, in a safe parking lot, and then turn around and go home. And it's like, wait a minute. That was the way to the vet, but we didn't actually go to the vet. And yes, dogs know where you're going yes. by the turns in your vehicle. So that is another um, uh, key point to keep in mind when you're working with your dog. Um, and then, you know, get closer and closer to the vet until you actually are going to the vet and you're just working in that parking lot for 20 minutes and then you're going back home. And then you actually go inside of your vet and you can call them ahead of time so they don't think you're weird, but they will love you for doing this and just say, hey, you know, Morgan tends to have a lot of anxiety at the vet. And I was working with these trainers. They said to just, you know, desensitize them by taking them to the vet's office, but I don't want to have an exam or anything. I'm not going to, you know, take your time or anything. I'm just going to go sit in the office. And so just go sit in the office and having your dog chill with you for 20 minutes. Don't go longer than 20 minutes. I know you might have to drive 30 minutes to get to that vet's office, but you're only staying for 20 minutes. Why 20 minutes? Well, an average year for us is like seven for a dog. So that 20 minutes is like, what? I can't do the math. 20 times seven. Uh, well, like two, almost two and a half minutes. hours. Yeah, that's a long lesson, right? So any, any longer than that, your dog's going to start to act bad, not because they choose to be bad, but because their brain cannot comprehend any more scenarios or information. They are done. Um, so keep it short and sweet. Leave. Um, and then maybe go to the vet's office once your dog's calm and check in. But you're not really checking in because you called ahead and you told them. Um, hey, I'm just going to say, I'm here for so-and-so to get examined. And they're going to flip out. <clears throat> and then you just sit there like, hey, I'm giving them, you know, whatever their love language is. It could be... Um, um, words of affection, it could be touch, um, but it's also important to remember not to coddle them or reward them when they're acting afraid. Wait for that split second that you can distract them, you know, when they might be shaking and like, oh, it's so bad here, and you're like, hey, uh, you're doing such a great job, and they're like, what? And you're like, oh, now you are, so I can pet you. You know, distracting them. For me, it's snapping. If I if my dog's afraid and I snap, they're like, what are you snapping about? Hey, what a good job for not shaking that three seconds, and then they start shaking again. Uh, but you keep distracting them out of that state of mind. Um, you can give them treats, but not while they're shaking. Yeah, yeah. So you have to snap it's and get them important. distracted, clap your hands, do whatever you need to do, stand up, maybe walk around. Um, again, sitting still for a dog just leaves their mind open for lots of naughty thoughts to filter through. So walking around gives them something to do so they don't have to use their mind as much. Um, and then rewarding them when they're calm. And you'll notice that it gets better and better. If you have multiple dogs, this is what we did. Um, to make sure our dogs never developed any anxieties at the vet. We scheduled their appointments one at a time, so we didn't lump them all together and get all four dogs examined in the same day. We had so-and-so's appointment here, and a couple months later, another dog's, and then a couple months later, but I took the dog, I took all four dogs every time. So one, a quarter of the time, they were actually there to be examined. The rest, they were just there to get loving attention and treats from the vets and vet staff. That, like, our dogs... Didn't get probed or touched. Right, or, yeah. right, just just petted and um, you know they give them lots of treats um, so they love that they love going to the vet because more times than not good things happen to them and then when that bad thing does happen they're like oh that really sucked but they they're gonna give me treats right because yeah. that's what and, they're used and to and they haven't spent the last two hours getting themselves amped, amped up, up. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, yeah yep and so taking it slow and again consulting a professional this is something that we do um, a lot to help dogs get over this we do mock exams and we kind of hold them like a vet um, vet staff would so that they get used to that that feeling of confinement, but not fearful. Like it's, it's, we're holding you because we want you to be safe. And so, um, you know, having that trust layered in, but starting slow and working your way up so that it gets harder and harder and maybe um, to the point where it would normally be super frightening to them and they're like, ah, this is old news. We've been doing this forever.
Yeah. Um, and it's not so scary. So you can totally get your dog to stop acting like Cujo at the vet. And that process, I told you, sounds very long and daunting. And it does take time. Um, again, seeking the help of a, a, of a professional can help expedite that exponentially. Um, just because we, we've we been doing this for years and we're really skilled at reading dogs and knowing when to, to interrupt those moments and overcome them and showing dogs how to do or how to have confidence much quicker. But it can be done slow and steady does win the race if, you, if you're consistent. Um, so, yes, that kind of answers those two main um, topics there. We're holding steady at 4% on, on the MacBook's Ooh. battery. So um, it's a nice hawk, too. Uh, so, yeah, I don't have anything else to add to that. I think I addressed everything. That was everything. great. That was great, Chris. Show them, show them your picture again. Oh, yeah. So another plug for um, the Barkery Bistro's paint night. And we had um, uh, Open Art Studios with Ashley Brickner and Jessica Brush, and they helped me paint this masterpiece. Isn't it lovely? I just, so cool. I just, I'm so proud of myself. I'm proud of I just, I don't think I could I do don't that know where I with a team of this. professional artists. <laughs> um, it's, and everybody's painting was so lovely last night. I was, I was super impressed and in awe of all of the wonderful. Um, of paintings of the dog. So here's my job for you, for all of you who have waited this long in the video, um, who stuck around, I guess you should say. Um, post your picture. If you've ever painted a picture of your pet, um, post it in the comments. I'd love to see it. I'm going to post Morgan so you guys can see hers a little clearer. Um, and then post a picture of your pet because we want to see that too because I know it's a masterpiece. So please share. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to our videos if you liked what you heard. Um, if you think a friend would benefit from the topic of socialization, please share this on your timeline or on their timeline um, and tag them in it so that they can benefit from this video as well. And we hope to see you guys next week on our next Q&A. Yeah. Oh, if you have questions, be sure to post them on our pinned post on, on our Facebook page. Post your questions there and we'll answer them next week. So now you can say Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ah! <gasps>